So uh, just wanted to point out, floor's looking like a disaster again, but no leaks, bone dry. I'm really happy about that. That's the lowest point on the boat right there. So I probably should have had a hatch, access hatch there anyway. So when I built the, redo my floor here and do my repair, I'm gonna work on that. And then, uh, okay, so I discovered, I think, what my problem is. So, or one of them, I got two problems. My belt is skipping. So what's happening is that this just isn't strong enough. So you can see how I can kind of bend it a little bit. So um, I'm going to put a brace from here to here on both sides. So um, basically I'm going to uh, just drill a couple holes and I've got an L-shaped mount, I'm going to turn them into triangles by joining them with a piece here. So, just going to do it's a little do-it-yourself project. Like everything else on my boat, we're going to get there eventually. Alright, so as you can see, this will massively stiffen this up here on this angle. So that's all I'm doing is putting the brace in. So I'm just going to do the other side. And we got to say that that thing just is not going to move. confusing um, there's a bunch of error codes which the controller behaves exactly the same and it goes from one beep repeatedly all the way up to 14 beeps repeatedly uh, my unit was beeping 16 times repeatedly which is not listed in any manual and it turns out that 16 times uh, means that the reverse that the brake is on I don't know wh why in their logic they would have the controller software program to beep like an error code if your brake is on, but that's what they chose to do and threw me for a loop. I'm just uh, working on getting this uh, pulley off here and I've noted that um, my bracing is a little bit loose here from the vibrating. I didn't go big enough with my um, fiberglassing so um, it looks like the bracket itself is solid it's just this piece is a bit loose here so um, so I'm just going to uh, rough up this area and then reapply some fiberglass um, yeah so basically I'm going to take this whole thing out again so it looks like I'm going to be here for 
a couple of days while I get this fixed. Anyway, so carry on. It took uh, two and a half hours to get the pulley off. Here, the shaft is good. Nothing's leaking, which is great. I just had to be very gentle on it, so I just kept uh, squeezing, adding a washer, tapping, tapping. It took forever, but I got it off, and then I just took the uh, reciprocating saw and. Uh, trying to take a look at how I did this here and I can see that these uh, were actually bonded in so um, they don't move um, yeah so it didn't stick very well mainly because I don't think I roughed this up here before um, I just don't know what I was thinking at the time but uh, obviously not the right stuff so I'm going to uh, rough that up and then I'm going to get ready to glass in a, uh, a hole um, new setup so I'm gonna have to go buy a couple of bolts and then the other thing that I I wasn't like crazy about this I, I what I wanted was an adjustable so just to be up or down but I had forgotten to put the nut on the inside so I was kind of in a position where I couldn't really adjust it because um, I could only push it one way and then this piece here um, was good it was down here and I didn't have a way to stop it from going that way. So I had to stop, I had this one to stop it from pulling out, but nothing to stop it from coming this way. Meaning, meaning my uh, piece like I just did there. So I want this to be about there. And then this piece here, I need to re-glass in but I just want to put a collar in behind it right there to stop it from going that way. So the first thing I need to put on the, the piece here is actually a collar and then this piece. So the goal that way I can sandwich that in here And, uh, and then slide the uh, piece on so it's a little tighter Just an update. Um, we uh, had the failed um, launch in the sense that uh, the boat leaked and my motor didn't work. So we pulled up on the sling. I was able to figure out what was wrong with the, the boat leaking. Um, it was a very small uh, crack in the bilge right at the keel join and whoever um, the gentleman that owned the boat before they cut into it with some like I guess a grinder or something so I had fixed this side but I'm guessing that structurally uh, last year sorry last year I fixed the side before I put it in because I found the grinder mark so I put it filled it with epoxy and fiberglass so all of that was solid because I ground it all down there too just thinking I said oh my repair failed and then I checked the other side and there was just a hairline crack and once I ground into it I could see that it was wet from the drop so I knew that it was on the other side so I'm guessing that when I repaired the one side it probably held it and then you know I used it throughout the, the season and then when I put it away in the winter they stuck it on the weight on the cradle again and um, the weight is just different because then you're not fully suspending off the keel the boat is now sitting on the keel so though it's a compression weight so I'm guessing that just it cracked over time 
with the winter and all the vibrating because I was gr grinding and sanding and ripping out everything this winter. So I'm guessing there's a small hairline crack formed in there. So um, I refiberglassed all that. It's all good now. Um, things been bone dry. Uh, so then the the second problem I had was with the engine. So what happened with the engine? As far as I can tell, it's actually the way that it's designed. There's um, settings for different things like the throttle voltage. Uh, this being just sorry, just a rephrase. I re replaced my engine with an electric engine. It's a 10 kilowatt motor, uh, brushless DC motor, and. Um, it's uh, probably m equivalent or more than my old motor. Like I would have had to really rev my motor to kind of get, um, you know, eight horsepower maybe. You know, they say it was 30 horsepower, but I don't believe it. It's probably more like 10 at peak. So uh, there's a lot of inefficiencies lost in a gas motor uh, with all the moving parts and everything. So like maybe there's 30 horsepower right at the fire, at the spark, but by the time it makes it through all the linkages, it's like a lot of it's lost energy and heat and, um, and friction from the from all the linkages. So anyways, electric motor, it's like instant torque. So it's 10 kilowatts. So pretty much I have like go with the motor. And by and large, it worked OK, except that um, I only put a very thin layer of fiberglass to hold the screws in. I don't know what I was thinking. I, th I think what I remembered was I wasn't too sure if it was all going to fit. So my intention was to put it all together, align it, make sure that it worked, tear it all apart again and refiberglass. I just forgot to do that. So what happened was the uh, screws vibrated loose from uh, when it's turning because there's a bit of a shake to it. Not a lot, but just a little bit of a vibration. So it's probably enough just to knock it. Plus the belt was loose. So every time the tooth jumps, there's a pretty big jolt. So it probably just shook it loose. Um, so that was one issue and then the second issue is that the, I guess the way the controllers work um, I have a 500 uh, amp controller uh, so it's pretty beefy and uh, it by default has a 56 amp default setting for the initial current flow so or for peak current flow so you can set it to almost like 200 I think but um, so I put a camera on my, uh, my, my amp meter, my voltage panel, and um, I watched the uh, engine rev, and then what ended up happening, as soon as it hit 55 and a half from the digital display, it cut out. So I'm guessing that setting needs to be changed. So I went and bought a cable, tried to get this cable connected, so a USB to serial dongle from the motor, golden motor. And um, it's just, it's the minute I plugged it in, the uh, USB drops. So I unplug it from the controller and then I see the, the cable again. So I don't know what's wrong. There's something wrong with either the controller, the cable, probably the cable, because uh, they look pretty cheap. Um, so I'm actually gonna bring it to the manufacturer. They've been, uh, or to the supplier. They've been very good, uh, Golden Motor, uh, calling me back and trying to help me out. I uh, can't complain about that, but to just I'd like to be able to get in the motor and program it. So once I get that done, then I'm just going to raise it to like 120 amps before I cut out, just so I don't have to go overkill. But um, I just want to get over this 56 amps because it seems like I'm right at the point where there's enough momentum from the prop to move me. And uh, one of my comments that I got from a fellow sailor is that my uh, prop is too small. I have a very small uh, two prop propeller, so it's pretty small, um, which is, you know, probably by and large fine for the grand scheme of things. But if I had a three blade uh, prop, that extra 30% more coverage would make it 30% less or more efficient, right? So I would need even less power to run it. So I probably only need 40 amps, and I probably wouldn't have been in this problem. So, um, so anyways, that's my uh, my situation. So I'm going to be bringing it to the manufacturer tomorrow. Walls underneath here, um, and then I'm going to hopefully be able to log into this thing and then check the settings, program it properly, uh, but also just make sure that it works here with my uh, laptop. I thought I'd uh, just do a voiceover here just to close off this video uh, while I was uh, fixing the lines here. Uh, the 
I had ultimately, as, as uh, stated in this video, three problems. I had a hole in my boat, which was a hairline crack, which I ended up um, putting uh, multiple layers of fiberglass, and then uh, you know I put my uh, Interlux 2000E barrier coat, and then I put the anti foul on top of that. Um, so that that one was good. But with the motor, there were two actual problems. Uh, one, the controller was defective. So what was happening is that once I put a load on it, it basically cut out. After doing a ton of experimenting, it, it didn't matter whether I was 30 amps, 80 amps, 50 amps. It just, at, once there was a load, enough of a load, the controller cut out. Uh, the actual settings were correct in the motor. So um, once I got a new controller from Golden Motor and a cable, I could see that the settings were actually correct, but the motor still cut out. And uh, it was the new controller that ended up um, getting rid of all my motor issues. So basically, I would kind of like turn the motor on, start moving, and then it would go beep and cut out and reset. So basically, the controller was rebooting. My second problem that I had with the motor was the thrust bearing. And essentially, the mount or the pressure coming from the prop pushes the shaft forward or pulls it in reverse. And I was kind of relying on the stopper that is under the boat, uh, close to the skeg. Um, I think they call it the, the collar. I'm just trying to remember now the name. But uh, anyways, that was, I shouldn't have been relying on that. So I ended up uh, really beefing up the motor mount itself, making it very stiff with the triangles. And uh, once I did that, it was a, uh, I was able to move and keep the, uh, the bearing in place. Get some rest, be back at it tomorrow, see if I continue on this motor and figure out what's wrong with it. Another little sail, still working with the peaks here. But, we'll move it.